But Karen, why didn't you have insurance? <sighs> when Isaiah took on my clients, I let it lapse to cover other expenses. But Zach gave you money. Pam. And he's offered to help you again. I know that. Well, then you need to let him help you. Okay, this was the biggest question that I had during last night's episode. What in the world happened to the 77, not 75, not 72, the $77,000 that Zach gave or quote unquote repaid Karen? Remember when he, when he got his first, uh, if I remember correctly, it was $25,000 from his first project with chain breakers. He gave Karen five grand to pay her back basically her his first payment to pay back every cent that you know she ever spent on him then in season three it was a seventy two thousand dollar check so folks it was seventy seven thousand i know last season during the whole dinner situation with the letters and crap um zach said seventy five thousand but it was seventy seven and then karen had the audacity to say not enough some people have actually had a good, you know, theory about, well, maybe Zach is feeling guilty or whatever. And he feels out kind of like in the team where it's like, you know, that's my mom and that's my brother. And I feel like I owe them something, but he doesn't owe Karen a damn thing. It's like, she wants to put a price tag on. Basically it's almost like Karen is trying to sue Zach for emotional, you know, depression, emotional damages and crap like that. And that's just stupid. That's like, you know, anytime I know a lot of people wish this was, you know, real, but like whenever you and someone else have a failed relationship, I'm not even talking about marriage. You just wish that you can get back all the money that you ever spent on that person or, you know, the emotional impact they had on you, but you, you, you can't, you really can't. I mean, but regardless, I do feel like, um, we need to know what Karen did with that money. Now I've looked at people in the comment section on my live streams from YouTube and Instagram last night. Some people are like, well, Jeremy, the cost of living in Atlanta and all these other expenses. First of all, I don't live in Atlanta, so I don't know what it's like, but $77,000 is a lot of money. And the passage of time in this show was so damn inconsistent. Now, here's what we do know. I am thankful that the show did address why Karen did not have insurance. If I remember correctly, it was during season three, during the first half of season three, that Isaiah, a former employee of Karen's salon, quit, opened his own salon gave lower prices and as a result took a majority of karen's clients so during the first chunk of season three she was on the verge of a financial you know allegedly possibly going bankrupt because the salon was all she had and if that was going to tank then she's literally screwed then when zach gave her the 77 or 72 thousand dollar check karen was like look, just thank you. It, this could not have come at a better time than now. But before getting that check, she says to Pam, look, once Isaiah left and my business was on the verge of collapse, collapsing, I let the insurance lapse. Basically, you know, I, I guess that means that she got rid of it or she didn't make a payment and decided to use the money that she would have put into insurance to cover other expenses of the salon. So basically, when she saw that her business was failing, she no longer had the insurance on the shop. But the thing is, as soon as she had that $72,000 check along with the five grand, she should have instantly made the uh, phone call to reinstate the insurance on that shop. It just makes no sense to me because she got this money in the mid section of season three, put the money in the bank the next day, which just so happened to be when the bank was robbed by Q and his gang. And then you have all of season four, all of season five, and then the shop set gets caught on fire in early season six. Keep in mind, if you pay attention to the scene when Pam asked, well, what about Zach? He gave you that money. Pam, it's like she didn't want to address it. Folks, 
I mean, some people have speculated, well, Karen probably still has the $77,000, but she just wants more of Zach's money. But here's the thing, though. Go back to season four at the opening of season four when that woman, the private investigator that I guess Heather hired, uh, basically she was the officer that arrested Zach for back child support when she was popping up at, at the salon asking Karen where Zach was. Karen had told Pam that she was thinking about getting a house and for the baby and whatnot. So she, so at least in season four, we know that she had that $77,000. Now, um, going back to earlier in the video when people were mentioning in the comments, oh, well, Jeremy in Atlanta, things are expensive. So, you know, all that money probably went to other stuff. I'm not saying Atlanta living is, isn't expensive because as I said earlier, I don't live in Atlanta. I don't think that Karen could not have afforded the $77,000. I'm sorry. She couldn't have afforded the insurance with that $77,000 because keep in mind, she was only, I don't want to say out of business, but her business was, you know, it wasn't doing so great for like several episodes because before long, it wasn't long before Pam revealed, oh, well, I called the health inspector and made up these false claims on Isaiah's shop in order to get it closed. And as a result, all of Karen's clients came back because remember with the whole pandemic and other restrictions and whatnot, not a lot of extras were allowed on set. So as a result, it wasn't until like season four, when we really saw a bunch of people in the bank or in the salon or in the airport. So Karen wasn't out of, you know, Karen wasn't in financial strain for that long. So I don't know what the hell happened in that $77,000. I really don't know. I think this is a mystery that hopefully Tyler Perry does bring up because I don't think the $77,000 was thrown to the wayside because the fact that Pam brought it up lets us know that, yes, that still happened. It wasn't just a one and done thing. It is canon because, you know, Zach brought it up. But my question is this. What the hell happened to that money? Why can't she use that to rebuild her salon? This is ridiculous. Honestly, I would have been more impressed if Zach never made the offer to, I mean, I said this a season or two ago. I'm like, you know what? Instead of child support, it will be an interesting situation if um, Zach has to, is able to negotiate. Hey, Karen, you know, child support aside, how about if I help you find a new place to set up shop for your salon? And that could count as like spousal or, you know, well, not spousal, but, you know, child support because your livelihood is how you make money. So if I help you out with this salon situation, then we're cool. Because with the Rise Ventures he has with Bryce, he can find a new property for her salon to be, you know, reestablishing. Because it will be interesting if it's like, you know, she gets an estimation on the damages, but it turns out that it would be cheaper for her to just restart in another property. And then and then to have her crawl to Zach for help. Let's say she goes to a place called a place she heard she's heard about called rise ventures but she doesn't know who the owner is and then an interesting cliffhanger could be her going into the office and then it turns out that it's zach i would just love that the the fact that she would have to humble herself to try to get a good deal from zach i would love that so much but we just have zach flat out saying i promise i'll help you rebuild it and i'm like really man that just ruined so much story potential so with that being said, what the hell do you think Karen did with that money? Do you, does she still have it? Does she just not want to spend it? What What's going on? But regardless, thanks for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. Also, I find it funny. At the beginning of the episode, uh, when Andy is talking about... No, I think Karen was like, oh, I don't know what I want to do about this salon. Well, hey, just let me know um, how I can help. You know, I'll do what I can. Well, yeah, you know, I, I show appreciate. I can use as much help as I can get. Side note, remember that at the moment, I don't think Andy has all that much money. She put up $1.5 to help, which was half of what was necessary to get Sabrina out of jail. And not to mention on top of that, you have um, later in the episode when Pam is talking about, oh, well, no insurance issues. The money Zach gave you, Pam. Well, why don't you take up Zach on his offer? Well, I'll call him tomorrow. No, you better call now before Fatima's crazy ass get you know comes home. But then as soon as Aaron shows up, 
Hey, I'll help you whatever you need with the salon. No, I got the money. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so in three situations with Andy, with Pam, and then with Zach, you need help. But when it comes to Aaron, you don't want his help. Okay. Wow. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about this $77,000. Like and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.